Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have two very special guests today, and they are amazing individuals. We have Marnie and Nick today, and they have co-authored a book called Lead It Like Lasso, and it's an amazing book. Um, you know, basically, people, they their goal was to teach people how to become the best versions of themselves, and they have amazing input and advice today to share to help you become the person that you always always dreamt of becoming, or if you feel stuck in life, or if you're just unsure of certain things, they've got the answers today. So I want you to listen, put your ear, take all, out your earplugs, listen to what they have to say, <laughs> because they're going to take you on a whirlwind journey to a lot of valuable information. So Marnie, why don't you just tell us a little about yourself and what you do? Yeah. So um, thanks for having us. Uh, Nick and I are entrepreneurs, as many of your guests are, and many of your guests have often also written books around leadership, right? So we have yes. written Lead It Like Lasso. But um, in general, although we um, scaled and sold our company in three years, the same three years that Ted Lasso, the show, was developed, um, one thing that we say about ourselves is we are relative nobodies. And a lot of times when folks read leadership or business books, they feel like, oh, I have to have X, Y, or Z. I need to be a multi-billionaire to do this. I have to have, you know, all of these bits and pieces. And what we found is that we had really developed a framework working together and in the business that was really doable for everyone because we believe everyone can be the best version of themselves and the tagline of our book is a leadership book um, for life, your life. And I'll let Nick kind of explain what we were thinking of when we when we came up with that line. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, we believe everybody's a leader, right? It doesn't matter if you're in the boardroom, the locker room, the dining room, or even the classroom, right? It's it's upon everybody to to lead themselves. And especially these days, and I'm not sure if, if you've ever read Hidden Potential by Adam Grant, but he talks about the fact that we're in a character revolution. You know, with all, with all this AI, this generative AI all over the place, you know, everything's being automated and, and technical skills, hard skills are, are being commoditized, right? So we're all about standing out, differentiating yourself. And to us, that's that's character and that's personal leadership. And, you know, like Marnie said, you know, we've 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 gone through lots of businesses. We've created our own business, we've been successful with it. And we had a we have a framework that we developed over the years of working together. And, you know, people always asked us, you know, how did you do it? How were you so successful in such a short amount of time? And it's, it's this framework, but it's always built on the, the very basis that, you know, in order for us to lead as, as, as managers within a company, as leaders within a company, we first had to start with the foundation of a personal leadership framework. And once you have that, that just scales right up to, to business leadership, so forth and so on. Hope that makes sense. It does make sense. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So, you know, you guys developed this company and it just like took off, but you have, you know, you really stress about becoming the best version of yourself. Now, can you talk a little about, you know, what the best version of yourself really means to you? A lot of people, you know, they 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 don't know what the best version of themselves are. They're kind of even confused on, on what steps to even take, you know, but, you know, they're not happy with where they are in life but they don't, you know, some don't know what their purpose is. Some don't know how to get there. And, you know, but they, they, you know, deep down inside, they want something better. So how do you become the best version of yourself? Well, you, you, you spoke to it in the beginning without even, <laughs> without even necessarily knowing that this is where we would go with it. Um, but you mentioned when people feel stuck, right, that, that there's this, fight within themselves. And it is often, like you said, because they don't know themselves. So a lot of business books talk about leadership in terms of having a vision and purpose. But Nick and I felt like it's really important to understand your own core values first, yeah. because when you can get to know yourself and your own core values. Um, then you can decide if it's aligned to the way of the work now, right? right. And many times if you're feeling a clash at work, it is because your core values are not aligned with the work that you're doing. It is in fact why Nick and I started a business <laughs> is because we had we had worked together before 
And that company had gotten acquired three times. And he and I together were in charge of customer success and support. And he also had all this engineering piece along the side too. Yeah. But the core value the company claimed was raving fans, but we kept getting our staff cut. We kept getting our resources cut. And as people who really cared about making folks successful, it was that clash that caused us to say, we should start a company, but really base it on raving fans. I and I, I think I'll add on to that. That's at the company level, right? But, you know, Marty mentioned this, being authentic to yourself, understanding what your core values are. And I'll, I'll give you a personal story about that. I mean, in early on in my career, I was fortunate enough to be successful. I just kept getting promoted, promoted, promoted and mm -hmm. in, in landing into different leadership positions. And I, I really got stuck with imposter syndrome, right? So I felt like a fraud, right? Yeah. I, I didn't feel like I necessarily, I was younger than people I was managing. I, I didn't feel like I knew any better than them. They were much more experienced. And it wasn't really until I had one of my mentors at the time, you know, really say, you don't get it. You don't get it. You, we promoted you to this position because of who you are, not who you're pretending to be, right? So I think just reinforcing the fact that what Marnie just said, that our, our leadership framework does start with core values and why it's so important is because if you are not truly living your life, whether it's personally or professionally, to your guiding pr principles and what drives you, yeah. it causes things like imposter syndrome, causes an awful lot of anxiety, an awful it, lot of stress. Um, and and we felt whether it's personally or in a corporate setting, you know, any leadership framework has to start with identifying what the guiding principles are for you individually or for you as a company. How does someone really understand, you know, when, if they're going through imposter syndrome, how do they, you know, what are some of the symptoms? Some people might not be, you know, familiarized with that terminology. So, yeah. you know, to explain to someone, you know, you know, you're going through imposter, you know, um, uh, syndrome, you know, how do you start feeling when you're going through that? Anxious, very <laughs> nervous. Um, like feeling you're going to caught. <laughs> yeah, it's exact. That's a great way to say it. Like you're going to be caught like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm speaking in front of this team, or I'm speaking at a, a seminar on a podcast, right? And you start thinking, oh my God, are people are people taking me seriously? Or am I saying the right things? Yeah. Uh, am I acting the right way? And when you really kind of, and I struggled with this, right? And I struggled with it big time, especially in my late 20s. Um, it just, it ends up snowballing and you get very anxious right mm -hmm. you start dreading every interaction with people that you're supposed to supposed to be leading yeah. um it can almost and, paralyze you okay. yeah absolutely and it's it's very common um you know if you read the literature on it it's yeah it's it's quite common it's especially it's more common in people who are capable of doing the position than people who are not, which is really weird, <laughs> really weird fact about imposter syndrome. But, um, you know, I know when I've talked about it in peer groups, I've heard other people talk about it. Just just the fact that there's a a, a tag to this Our to board. this experience is people just feel better knowing that it's out there. But again, I would say the thing that got me over it more than anything else was really starting to identify what my core values were Right. and what guides me and the fact that i was living to those is enough right yeah. it's not always enough for people but for me it was enough and it, it got me over that hump how do you feel like you developed um and understand that what your core values were was there any particular tools or techniques that you did that kind of opened your eyes to really look at yourself in a deeper way where you could dive into yourself and really think about who you are and what your core values are and where you want to be in the next five, 10, 15 years from now. Yeah. I mean, for me personally, at the time it was, it was a mentor who really had some, some conversations with me and kind of pulled it out of me, but you know, not everybody I think is in that position. 
Um, and that's one of the reasons why we wrote the book and we spent such a great deal of time talking about core values and the, the interaction with culture. And Marnie, do you want to talk about at all our book and the activities and specifically yeah. around core so values? In the book, we don't just explain what core values are, but we actually have a, a workbook version of it where you oh, can nice. really do your, do the work for yourself. And it's the the worksheets are free on our website. So leadatlightlasso.com. You can just go down, download the worksheets, even if you don't read the book as much as we'd love you to read the book. <laughs> um, so in that, really, sometimes it takes looking at like what what are core values, right? Authentic Authenticity is one. Accountability is one. Get stuff done is one. It's really any of these things, but sometimes it's hard for you to sit there and come up with one. So we have quite a, a list in the on my website and in the book that people should go through and think, am I happy when I, when I see that word, does that feel like me? And you've got to, it takes some narrowing down. It's funny when you first read through the list, you're like, yeah, I want all of them. Yes. Yeah. I want to be authentic and I have integrity and I like to be happy and fun. Is, and, but then when you really start thinking about if I were going to tag you with this, right. You'll be like, okay, to be honest, that one's not me. This, this one speaks to me. And you really need to narrow it down to three to five that really feel like you. And yeah. what we typically find is if you're really stuck, one, think about when you're the happiest and think about what, like describe that situation. And that might help you realize, like, when did you feel most accomplished? Ooh, when I got a big project done, well, maybe accountability is something, maybe achievement is something you like, or if push comes to shove, you can go to a friend and ask them why they're your friend and ask them why until they get so annoyed that they're like, well, I like you because you helped me become the best version of myself or something. And you're like, oh, I must help people become the best version of themselves. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know, and, and it's so important to be, you know, some a lot of people sometimes lose the ambition to want to be the best version of themselves. And I, I find that sometimes it, it leads to a lack of self-worth or low self-esteem. And, you know, and, and to, in, not to get really deep into the subject, but sometimes it goes back to your roots and just the environment you grew up in and, you know, and, and maybe something traumatic that happened along the way and it kills your self-esteem, it kills your self-worth. And then you, you know, but in the back of your head, you still have those goals. You still want to be the, you still want to be the, the best version of yourself, but you just, you know, from everything that you've gone through in life, you feel like it, it's not a reality. It's just a dream, you know? And, but as we know from Disney, dreams can become a reality, you know? So absolutely, yeah. So yeah. it's putting a path in front of you to get there. Right. So when you know who you are and you're kind of aiming to be the authentic version of yourself, then to really look at that vision and purpose and back map you said like what does it look like three years out what does it look like five years out and we really encourage people to to take a look at the steps to get there and to set those intermediate goals i think if you if you just say in five years i'm going to do x and then take no action on it yeah you're guess what that's not going to happen right that right. is just a dream but if you look at it and send set intermediate goals that are actionable yeah. and and defeat the blank page, like do the next thing. That's where people, and with imposter syndrome, like I said, you often have that in paralysis. Yeah. We encourage folks to defeat the blank page, do the next thing, take a step, even if it's a small step. Right. And 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 have some guide rails too. Like one of the things that we put in the book, when we, we start, we talk a lot about legacy, you know, thinking about your legacy and and we have we have a couple of different examples in the book, and one is a little bit morbid, but it's okay. Write your own obituary, right? You've probably heard that before, right? Yeah. What do you want people to remember you for? Uh, we have a little less morbid example specifically in the book where we we say, okay, write up. Imagine you're about to retire. Write write up your retirement, your email <laughs> invitation for your retirement party right and and hit the high notes of what you want to be known for and we're big believers in you know once you have your vision and your goals and you're set up to hold yourself accountable to those goals is to put up those rock those guide rails um similar to like bumper pads and bowling when you don't want to yeah. go into the gutter right so yeah. 
once you define, you know, what you really want to be known for, you know, that's now in place. And if you start deviating off course a little bit yeah. in your goals and, and what you're actually doing in the here and now, you always have that reference point to get you back on track. Right. Right. I like that. I like that yeah. a lot. You yeah. know, and I, I think a lot of people, you know, when you when you think back to your legacy, what you want people to remember you by, you know, that really makes you start thinking, wait, did I am I there yet? You know, the are people, you know, well, I didn't really do enough in this area, even though I want to be remembered for that, you know. And, you know, would you say goal setting is good once you start really thinking about, you know, what you want to be remembered as, you know, what version, what type of person do you want people to to think of you as, you know, do you suggest uh, goal setting, maybe creating short term goals, long term goals, maybe doing some type of journaling or is there some type of strategy that someone could start really organizing everything so they could actually have some kind of trajectory to actually re get to that point where they are? the best version of themselves? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we talk vision and purpose and part of those chapters, we have SMART goals in there. So a lot of folks have heard that, but for folks that haven't, it's specific, measurable, attainable, you know, relevant and timely goals Yeah, um, really help to, it, it's interesting that the, the unique part about goal, a SMART goal is that it is actually measurable um, and you can define, it's very obvious that you hit it or did not hit it. As opposed to, I want to be happy. Yeah, that's not an actionable goal. But if you said, I want to be happy because on New Year's Day, twenty twenty five, I have twenty thousand, two hundred thousand, two million dollars in my bank account, right? Like you're defining a, a deadline, and then you also need to create the path to get there. So yeah. create a goal that you can work toward, and then create the steps. To move yeah. toward that and accountability right yes. i mean that's i think that's that's a big part of it and it's you know that's part of the smart goal um but it's funny you know we were we were doing an exercise just yesterday you know we've got the nfl draft coming up for yeah. football fans out there mm -hmm. right and marty and i went through um a process online with with our community where we drafted a personal board of advisors, right? So there's corporations out there that have board of advisors, right? That yeah. really- Keep them help. on their guardrails. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, they hold the leadership accountable uh, to, to doing whatever the, the corporate mission is. And we we strongly believe that people should have board of, boards of advisors, right? Yeah. People that will hold them accountable, people that you trust, Right. But more importantly, people that may help you achieve and give you guidance and advice on on where you want to be. Right. I'm I'm not a great networker. Right. I'm not somebody I'm, I'm pretty introverted by tendency. Yeah. Um, and, you know, where I could use the help is is connections and networking right. and helping me you know, it build, build my brand or our brand as a company, right? So, so trying to fill in the gaps, you know, we've often heard and we've said in our book, and I think, listen to this for a second, right? You're pretty much the average of the five people you hang out with right. mostly, right? And, and that's, if you start thinking about that, and I have a 20 year old son, or we talk about this a lot, right? What, what needs do each of those five yeah. people meet? and yeah. someone dragging um, you down or are they all yeah. really lifting you up yes. yeah and are they willing to i think so i have a 22 year old and a 24 year old so we've had the same conversations at our house um and and it's one thing to have a lot of folks that will support you in the social world there are a lot of people that are willing to have fun with you but it is less um it's not as frequently found where you have somebody that will be honest with you yes. and will truly hold you accountable, right? In a kind and honest way. I love Brene Brown's work, um, Dare to Lead, where she says, kind, clear is kind, right? And yes. kind is clear. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's really important in building that peer network. In the show, Ted Lasso, yeah, coach has his diamond dogs. And so that's, <laughs> that's what the group is called for Ted Lasso fans. But for everyone else, it's the notion of, yeah, a, a board of advisors, right? Your peer, your own personal board of advisors. Right. 
No, I love that. I love that. You know, it's, it's funny because, you know, I, I agree with you, you know, you take five people and you do become a part, you kind of rub off our energies, just kind of rub off each other. And you really have to, you know, I've had this conversation even with my husband and we, you know, we've, you know, the, the people who you hang around the most, are they pulling you down or are they pushing you up, you yeah. know, and you can, you know, after a while, you may not realize it in the beginning because you might have those fun friends, but then you start spending a lot of time with them and they might just be great for fun, but are they overall pulling you down and, and, and holding you back from achieving your uh, goals in life? You know, like maybe they're good for one, one area of your life, yeah. but maybe in some other areas, are they pulling you down? Then you have to reevaluate what do I want for myself? And we go back to what you said in the beginning, the best version of ourselves. Are these people contributing to helping you become the best, best version of yourself? Or are they actually slowing down the process and maybe even pulling you down where it's, it's, you're kind of like going down the, the step ladder when you really should be climbing it up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You know, I, I find that, you know, that's a, a great piece of advice. Now, when you do these strategies, are there other things that you really emphasize to, to people when they are trying to become the best version of themselves and they're trying to really develop those core values within themselves so they can become the leader that they want and they can achieve the things they want in life? Are there other things that you really find that are really valuable to incorporate in their daily lives that will get them to that point? You mentioned journaling and um, this isn't so much a journal activity, but it's an activity that we have, again, it's still available on the website, <laughs> still mm -hmm. for free, no email required. So, um, and it is a, to create your personal operating system. So it is where you start documenting your personal philosophy, your core values, your strengths, your weaknesses. And we also have a communication guide where you can outline how it is best, how you like to be communicated to so many times at work you'll find heads butting with someone because they're texting you at 9.30 at night and you're an early bird already in bed and that causes anxiety or, you know. So to really take a look at yourself mm -hmm. and reflect on that um, and how it aligns to the way you're living, I think yeah. is one step. Nick, what were you thinking when <laughs> she said? Well, I mean, I think uh, just a couple of points that, that I think are really important. Um, one is, you know, and if, if for those Ted Lasso fans out there, believe is extremely important. <laughs> Stacey, you mentioned it earlier. You talked a little bit about manifesting things and dreaming, right? You have to believe, number one. But number two, and I, I think this is really important uh, for people, like I, I run into people all the time that says, I, you know, I don't want to be a leader, right? This, that's yeah. not for me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, or I, there's no way I'm ever going to become a leader. Um, you know, there, there are studies upon studies that, that really show that you're not born a leader. Leadership is learned, right? Yeah. And I think a lot of people kind of like, hey, no, I've never really had experience being yeah, a leader. It's, I don't, it's, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's really hard. But you know what? It's not hard. And you're not born with it. Everybody who is, fulfills a leadership position today, whether you're a parent, you know, you're a student in a student government, you're in business, what have you, they have learned to become a leader, right? Yeah. And there, there are there are two critical components in my mind, at least. One is understanding what leadership is, what a framework is. Um, but the other thing is emotional intelligence, right? Yeah. And I think we talk, we talk about emotional intelligence. We talk about the notion of listening. Um, you know, Ted Lasso is, is famous for quotes. And one of the most famous quotes from Ted Lasso is be curious and not judgmental, right? Listen yeah. before you, you really start throwing your opinion and your judgment out there. Um, so that's, uh, we talk about all of those different things in the book. But, you know, especially for the, you know, for this, you know, the the people who are just entering the workforce and they've got a lot going against them right now. It's so expensive to do anything. And they feel like, oh, you know, I'm never going to get a job to, to figure out, you know, yeah. to, to live comfortably. You know, you got to start with yourself. You got to believe in yourself. Um, and it's it's everybody in this world has learned to become a leader. You're not born with it. So you're an even footing with everybody else. Right. Yeah. 
And I agree with that, you know, and, and it's been said many times when people, you know, say I'm not a leader, but you, like you said, we're not born leaders. We, we learn to be leaders. And, you know, when people say I'm, I'm not a leader, well, why aren't you a leader? What's holding you back from, from you letting others hear your voice. And, and, you know, I think we had mentioned even before the show, what is, you know, what, what, what person, what might define a leader and, you know, it may be a different definition for another person. So, yeah. you know, a mother might be the leader of her home. She might be the rock of the house holding everything together where the husband might work or the, or maybe vice versa that, you know, the, the woman might work in a company and she is, is the, the leader, you know, in, in her department, you know, or the husband is the leader in the department. So it's really, you could be a leader, even in your own group of friends, you know, sometimes people look up to you for that advice because you have, you know, you know, you, know, you think things clearly and you always have good advice. So leadership could be, it's not just one standard thing when you're thinking the leadership, oh, that's, you know, that's, a, that's the boss. Person. Yeah, that's the boss, the big person on the po uh, podium. No, not necessarily. You know, what does leadership mean to you? And I think people should answer that question to themselves. What do they think leadership means to them? And, you know, and then look around because anyone could be a leader in their own environment, you know, and, you know, what do you want to do? You know, some, I've had one person that I'm not a leader and, but yet they want to help people. So, you know, in a sense, hello, you that are is a leader, absolutely. Yeah. you know? Yeah. So yeah. you know, I think people have to really realize and reevaluate their inner selves too. What do you think about that? I oh. wholeheartedly <laughs> agree. I, and I, and I, I'll tell you a funny story about that. You talk about, you know, everybody's, you know, most everybody's a leader in their own regard, you know, in, whether it's a family or a small office or just helping people. You know, I was, I was working with uh, somebody who's just graduating college and he was going on interviews and he kept getting hung up on, you know, the the question of talk about your leadership experience. Yeah. Right. And and he didn't have a good answer. You know, he talked about the fact that he was a captain of the soccer team or he was treasurer of his fraternity or something like that. And he just didn't really know how to talk about that. Because the reality is when you're young, you don't necessarily have a ton of leadership experience. Right. And he um he, he asked to read the book, right? And he read the book and, you know, subsequently after reading the book, he went on the, the interview and they asked him a question about leadership. He went on an interview and asked him a question about leadership. And instead of talking about, you know, being a captain of a sports oh. team or, you know, an officer in a fraternity, he talked about building a leadership plan for himself. You know, how he identified his core values, how he set goals, how he came up with a, a plan to network and and build awareness and build his own brand as an individual. And he got the job, right? But the, the story here is you don't have to lead other people to be a leader. You always have to start with yourself. Yes. And and it's it's critically important because if you don't, at least in my opinion, I found this to be be the case because I've I've lived plenty of years of my life where I was not leading myself in a very efficient manner. Right. Um, but you know, if you're not leading yourself, then you're going to be anxious. You're going to be wandering. You're going to be questioning yourself um, you and what you stand stuck. for. Yeah, and you're going to get stuck. And and yeah, I mean that's a long answer to your short question. I don't even know if I answered your question. Stacey, <laughs> no, to be you did. With you, but, you actually yeah. did, and and I like how you you mentioned about how he actually thought about what his leadership core values were. And then he explained how he was developing a plan and, and he was, you know, developing a trajectory to, to, to accomplish those goals. Now that sounds very impressive. Like he's really <laughs> thinking about his future and he's yeah. really thinking about success and, and, and becoming a success. And that's what, especially when you get out of college and you're looking for a job, those are the type of people they want. Like you stand out. Yeah. yeah. It's you know, there's always a difference in business between strategy and tactics. Yeah. And that's the same thing that Nick just described, right? This person had a strategy and a plan, not just a list of things that you could document on a resume. And I think that's what's impressive about that story. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. 
Now, when you look at everything, like what are some things that you really think, um, you know, if you had to emphasize on some of the things we talked about today, what do you think really people should really um, emphasize when they're when they're looking to become the best version of themselves or they're looking to try to, you know, figure out, I know I have it in me. I just don't know like how to actually get it out of me, you know, like what are some suggestions to, to the listeners that you suggest that they start focusing on the most important things to get them on their way? I think starting with understanding yourself is key. So take a look, core values, your personal operating system. And then my next thought is look at, look at the world around you and find some folks who are doing what you find intriguing or someone that you admire and, yeah. and maybe aim for, you know, we, we end up working with a lot of folks and connecting them with mentors, et cetera. So that would be my, I won't go on for days. I'll let Nick answer too. Yeah, I would have said the, the, the exact same thing. And, you know, adopt a mindset of continuous learning, right? You know, read, listen to podcasts, um, you know, so in addition to trying to connect with people who you might admire and look up to um, from whatever they're, uh, you know, from a leadership perspective. Um, but, you know, we started a business in a market, in an industry that we knew nothing about, right? And it was reaching out to people. It was reading, it was listening, uh, and then immersing ourselves in it. And, you know, the whole notion of learn every day, right? Knowledge is power, it that is the truth and yeah. that is my advice to my 20 year old son and it's my advice to anybody who asks knowledge is power and and you've got to develop a mindset to do that and to me learning about how to become a better leader is is a huge part of that equation oh i i agree tremendously and that must have been scary too, diving into a new business that you knew mm -hmm. nothing about. <laughs> we had a lot of acronyms to learn. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it was interesting. We came from education and then we ended up developing software for the IT community. Um, and they really embraced us. And when you ask them what they loved about what we brought to the table, it was that we helped them learn something new. It's... Um, in Ted Lasso, there's the line, every disadvantage has its advantage. So sometimes you see something from a different perspective. And I would have people at conferences ask me all the time, where did your developers come from? Because like, no, we've had this problem for years that you all solved. And, and Nick and the rest of our development team came from ed tech development, right? And so they're very used to, they said, of course, that makes sense. You're used to developing things that people can read and understand. Yeah. Um, so we see how that happened. Wow, that's amazing. That's truly amazing. Now, what do you have available? You, you mentioned you mentioned a few things before, like when people go on your website, are there things that they could actually download and get some information on? Absolutely. So we've got a resource. So it's leaditlikelasso.com. Um, we have a resources tab that has all of the activities that are in the book are downloadable. Um, we encourage you getting the book and taking notes right in it, but some people flinch at writing in their books. <laughs> you can print out the worksheets. We also have a books um, tab. So we uh, we love a good leadership book. Smells like potential. So we, um, we've also listed different leadership books. Um, one of the things in our book, we have a character assessment so you can see which Ted Lasso character you like. Yeah. And we've given them sort of homework. If you're like this character, you might read some other books. <laughs> some oh, of these that's books. awesome. I love it. And what type of services do you offer? Right now, it's it's all the book, right? Oh, we have cool. a mass, we ha we have a master class coming out. Um, nice. Hopefully this summer on personal leadership. Oh, excellent. Um, but yeah, we're we're very for we extremely fortunate to start, scale, grow, and exit a business. And and again, our our we're fortunate to be in a position where we truly believe that um, helping people become the best versions of themselves specifically through leadership is is a gap in you know in this world and yeah. there's not enough people preaching it and that's we're just on a mission to do it right now is just to to try to help people become better 
That's awesome. And basically it's this book basically is your learning experience, how you got from point A to point Z, how you got from step one to the top of the ladder. And it's really sharing all these different resources and, and exercises and different things that you kind of, you know, kind of, you know, came to, came to you as you were going along that worked and that helped you get to that next level and elevate and elevate and elevate to the point where you are today. Exactly. A hundred percent. And, and just uh, what's different about our book, we believe is, you know, we tie it into the show Ted Lasso. And if, you know, we always like to say there's two types of people in this world. There's people who love Ted Lasso and there's those people who haven't seen it just yet. Yeah. Um, but, th <laughs> but when you watch Ted Lasso, you, you come away just always feeling good, smiling, you know, feeling good about yourself. It's such a, it's, it's a book about, I mean, it's a TV show about positivity. It's yeah. about growth, what have you. But our book, it's just relatable. It's fun to read. It's not a textbook, right? It's yeah. not boring. Um, not to discount any other leadership books because we've learned so many from so much from from all those books. Yeah. But it's just an engaging read and we highly encourage people to give it a shot and and take a chance on it. I love it. I love it. That's amazing. I, you know, this has been truly amazing. Now, is there anything else you'd like to add before we go? Because this is, you've, you've really given both of you a whirlwind of advice today that I, I think is really needed in our community because there are so many people out there that have so many great qualities about themselves. They just don't believe enough in, and they really need to re-examine their core values and figure out what they are so they could start moving forward because you know everybody I truly believe everybody has something special about them we all carry leadership in ourselves and we all have something very special that we could share with others and help each other grow and it's just being able to have the the confidence and being able to really be able to get out there and and, and to share it with others and the more people share and the more people you know listen it either the greater we could all grow as one big community. Yeah. I Wholeheartedly think agree. <laughs> I, mean, I think the only thing we'd add is, you know, we love to connect with people. We love to help people. Um, you know, Nick Coniglio, Marnie Stockman on LinkedIn, feel free to connect with us. And yeah. we'll, we just, you never know where a conversation is going to go. And, Absolutely. You know. Oh, that's amazing. I thank you so much, both of you, um, for coming on the show, thank sharing you. your book. And where can people find your book, by the way, before we go? Well, if you search it, it'll pop up everywhere. So lots of Barnes and Noble stores have it. Um, on Amazon is the easiest way for sure. But if you're not an Amazon shopper, you can also find it at the Barnes and Noble links. Or from our website, lidalikelasso.com as well. Oh, that's awesome. This has been amazing. Thank you guys so much for coming on the show. I hope to see you soon. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Thanks for so having us. We appreciate okay. you. Thanks. Thank you. You have a great day. Okay. <laughs>